Hello and welcome to the Love, Peace, Truth, Karma podcast. I'm your host, Leanne Brown, and today I've got my very, very dear, beautiful friend, Tanya Bardo. Um, We have a history on Real Housewives, which we're going to discuss now. Um, Tanya is a life coach, a serial entrepreneur um, and author of her amazing book, which was the pinnacle, one of the main reasons why what driven me into spirituality so you're gonna love this one a lot of laughs enjoy it if you're in china you just know it's corrupt they want it they want it to be like that here people are pretending to be 12 year old kids mate and they're not yeah. they're 40 year old men now we're getting bombarded with all these death numbers but there's no context there you've got one child pregnant you've raped many others and we had evidence to prove that do you think evil still exists today as it did back then and the answer should very simply be yes so tanya yeah! i finally got you on my podcast finally <laughs> finally this is going to be a lot of fun um it's going to be a bit different i think to um the normal because it's going to be less serious i mean we've had lots of fun actually on the other podcast but you're just another level comedian. probably more swearing <laughs> than the normal <laughs> Under 18, uh, switch off now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, gosh, where do we start? Let's start from the beginning. The beginning of you or the beginning of us? us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a love story. Um, yeah. yeah, so when we first met, what, did we meet? At, I was thinking about this before. Did we meet at an event or was we it met Denise's when, event or was it when I came to Sunday? No, you took me, you, you give us tickets to Denise's event. Oh yeah. God! In Manchester, because I don't know if because I met when we went to Hannah Hannah. Remember the yeah. The so Tapinaki. when when Wes moved to Sunderland, yeah. Um, then uh, Phil said, "I was going to say Phil Barsley, the husband." <laughs> Phil Barsley <laughs> he said, "Oh, Wes is moving up and he's bringing his wife, so we all went for a meal." Yeah. And, and, then uh, I didn't and you come. ordered <laughs> Lauren Perrier Rose, and I thought, "Oh God, she's dead posh. Phil killed me if I ordered that." Really? Yeah. I thought buzzing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. The food. and the love story, the began. love story began. Yeah. We were inseparable then, weren't we? Yeah, I just remember um, at the that event, um, Denise's event, and that was uh, so funny. And actually, going to jump into the um, the show, you got offered something similar. Do you remember? So I got offered something similar, and I, um, which Ask was me. filming wives. Um, and so I asked you about it and it turned out it was a hoax, I think. Right. Um, and then you got offered the housewives and then you, you put me forward. So yeah. that's how I ended up there. Because you were still living in Newcastle yeah. then, weren't you? Yeah, because just before they were Durham. about to cast, they said to you, is there anyone you can think of before they do the final cast? And you said, oh, because I just told you that we were, Phil had been signed to Stoke, so we were that's moving. That's right, that's right. So, yeah. So that's how that happens, really. What, what a journey that's been, hasn't it? Oh, my God. And how many, 14 series? Uh, yeah, 14 series. And I bowed out on the after six. That yeah. was enough for me. And you've muscled it through the only original housewife. Yeah, that's, I mean, Lauren's still there, but she did have some no, series No, that's what on. I'm saying. You've literally yeah. stuck from the beginning. You're like Hanging hardcore. on to my last bit of brain cell that I've got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my last bit of soul. Uh, oh, no, it has been amazing. Um, we had such a laugh, especially series one. It was so exciting, wasn't it? It was um, so funny. I oh. was actually watching reruns of that the other day, obviously being doing the boxing that's just been on now, hasn't it, with me fighting Rachel. Yeah. Um, and the kids are obsessed with it. They keep yeah. saying to me, why don't you go back on it? I was like, you hated it when I was <laughs> yeah. doing it because I was like having to do stuff over and over again. Yeah. But I was watching, uh, you know, when you come round and waking the kids up in the morning, you know, <laughs> Ali said to me the other day, she was like, I can't, but like, I just remember being in my bed because I didn't tell them because they were like, don't say anything or just surprise them. Yeah. I just remember being in my bed and I got woken up and I turned around and then there's <laughs> film camera in my face. It's like, what the hell? I was like, oh, I was just laughing. <laughs> And then, and Lola. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> Go on, you can tell it. <laughs> Lola outing you on TV. Wasn't she? Yeah, she, I'm gonna take you to school now. She went, What? You, you are. are. <laughs> I was like, Yes, yes, I Yes, every day I do. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> Maybe not every day, but I did do, still take him to school quite a lot. I was like, What? You're taking us to school. I was like, Oh, I was crying. Me and Phil were crying. Uh, oh, God. So reminiscing funny. on the, all the different 
crazy. Like the ups and the downs, you know, there was a lot of like there was a lot of stress and there still is a lot of stress yeah. in it, isn't there? But we did have a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. And we were sort of in our own little world, apart from when <laughs> some drama dragged us out. <laughs> some dark drama. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we had such a good laugh. It was amazing. Yeah. The Pat Fulton Castle. Um, oh my God, we didn't go to after bed. After hours. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go to bed because we were so excited. Like, oh, we're on actual holiday, forgetting that we had to film the next day. <laughs> we got a knock on the door and do, I, do I said, I'm poorly. And they was like, get dressed. Yeah. We had the, um, the luggage thing. We were pushing into the <laughs> into the lift and like down the corridor. You know, we were like kids, honestly. We were like kids. Um, Still are like kids. Yeah. And Pika's dinner party. Oh, God. With the blusher. Well, we only saw a blusher once it aired, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> she looked like she'd just put two hands in, like, bright pink paint <laughs> and just done two lines up her cheekbones. It's like every scene, it got pinker and pinker and pinker. <laughs> every toilet break, she must have been putting more like putting and more. Of... <laughs> I think we all went and got our makeup artist, didn't we, after um, after series one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Um yeah, I was just saying, uh, looking at my um, latest green screen and thinking, oh my God, I think feel like I need Botox because I've not had it for about a year, Botox, and I'm just like, oh, feeling all wrinkly on there. Well, that's some going, going a year about Botox. I couldn't do that. <laughs> my face would fall to my knees. <laughs> well, I was trying to really go all natural after having my boobs out, which I want to get onto, actually, with your yeah. surgery. Um, yeah, I, when I had my implants removed, I was just... Obviously, researching like the yeah. toxicity of them in your body and all the rest of like the, the other stuff that we sort of, even just to the stuff that we put on our skin, yeah, and perfume that we use that we just don't realise how toxic it is. And you've got your own story, like horrific story that was obviously aired through the show as well when you had yeah. your... So you just things. think when you have surgery, nothing bad's going to happen to you. So I researched the best doctors and everything, and basically this boob. So that's on my right side, yeah. Right, right hand side. <laughs> <laughs> it just went massive and dark and blue. So when I, when I went to the doctors and he shoved And what was the, just for anyone that doesn't know, what was the um, surgery that you had? Um, uh, uplift. So they cut the nipple off and they go under and then... Um, and it got a hematoma, which is a burst blood vessel. So it was just filling up with more and more blood. I think they took the drains out too quick. Um and he just stabbed this big syringe, which was like like a cup size circumference, and was just pulling out all this black blood out of my boob. It was horrific, and it's scar. It's like chopped spam. It's awful. Oh. And I need to get them redone and sorted out. But I just say, well, it could happen again. And Ralphie's at the time. I think how old was Ralphie? God, I can't count. Um, but anyway, I just think he's five now. I can still pick him up. I can't be asked to go through it's surgery. Five now, God. Yeah, five. Nice, isn't it? Oh, and he's such a little. Yeah, that's your godson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your godson's five. He's so naughty. We had to have a family meeting the other day because he called my dad a dickhead, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, my dad was fuming. So we had to call the family meeting saying swearing is not. So he was laughing his head off. Like, how's he going to the... get away with that in your house? I don't know. <laughs> And it was like, who's taught you? So Rocco was going, uh, so, and he went, Rocco. And Rocco went, shut up, you dickhead. And I was like, ah, <laughs> it was you. <laughs> yeah, they're little shits. Oh, you know, and I then love you've them. got Josh and like, I know. You know, like well, picking that's him up, up, turning him upside down, shaking him yeah, and like wrestling. Josh, so, my, for, so Phil, for, for all of you, Phil, Josh is my husband's brother. Yeah. Who is a nightmare. <laughs> I love him dearly, but... But the boys look up to him, which is not good. It's like looking up to, um, like, Racket Ralph or something. The grown-up version. And it, what is it? Because it's, obviously, I know, like, I know what it's like going into your house from, like... Wild. Having, yeah. <laughs> like, walking in, car flying past your face. You Nerf get like guns, a, footballs. Yeah. Got no ornaments. Yeah. What's and it people, like having three boys? It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. But I switch off now. Maybe that's why I had a mental breakdown partly as well. <laughs> I had a couple of mental breakdowns. Uh, yeah, but I just switch off and my mum goes, Tanya, could you not feel that? Can you not hear that? And I just zone out. I'm just sort of to. sat like, like a nerf paper. <laughs> Until like, a nerf gun like proper hits me and I like really hurt his own. And I'm like, ah! Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very different to having girls, definitely. Yeah, it's Gabriella. She's colouring and stuff and yeah. like... 
yes, mummy. And like, the, Gabriella being your first as well. And yeah. Then, so <laughs> it was oh, hell that loose. It was a shock. Um, it was a really bad shock. They can't go past each other without like, punching each other, like doing each other dead arms. Like, why? And they've got no fear of killing each other. Like, they will jump on, like, on that and dive onto the head. No fear. They won't, it doesn't even enter the head. I might kill my brother here. Yeah. No. They don't give a shit. Oh, and then we're talking in the car about the going same on with the kids about uh, how well your boys are doing though with football. That's and... the only reason I'm bloody keeping them, to be honest. <laughs> I think you've said worse on uh, oh, live on, uh, oh on the show God, about the kids. No. Yeah, no, that's the only reason I'm keeping them at the minute. They're showing really good signs of being top footballers. Well, and the top footballers all um, cock of the cock of the local prison. <laughs> Yeah, so Rocco's at Stoke. Rocco's at Stoke. He's just signed another two years. And um, a little Renzi boy, uh, the eight-year-old, he's at Man City. So we've only actually got a Tuesday off from football. Wow. <clears throat> but And then they saw uh, little Ralphie kicking a ball at Man City as well. And it's like, oh, would well, you like to join? I was like, no. Oh, my God. No way. Yeah, because they're all different age groups, so different so days. So different, and... different nights. Oh, my gosh. So Ralphie did get picked up to play for the under-sevens for the local team. And he's only five. Um, but then, because he is really good when his focus is on it, because he's five. Yeah. Um, so then he started, he forgets what colour team he's on, tackles his own teammates, <laughs> scores in the other net and then cheers. So we got home and we was actually like did some like colour tests. Like, is he colour blind? And he was like, what colour is this? And he was like... Red. It's like, oh, so you did know he was in a red top. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you tackling red and scoring in the wrong net? <laughs> just getting carried away. Yeah, and then he just stop like and do. His lo- it's like me. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's showing a lot of traits in me. He's just like doing random lunges. <laughs> mm. Oh no, um, it's it's really good that they're uh, they're so talented. They're showing real ta- talent. Anyway, how do you feel about that? Are you happy for them to go into the, that football world? And yeah, do you not my, feel my, sorry for the, the the girlfriends or the partners that they're going to, you know, because it is... I don't feel sorry for them. I don't feel sorry for the girlfriends. I feel sorry for me. <laughs> Fuck them all. I feel sorry for fucking me. That is it. <laughs> they can all get on with it. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Um, I mean, it is a savage world, but the world's savage and I just think... Um, and they're so competitive with each other anyway. Uh, they, they're used to it. Yeah. And they've got um, each other. That's the nice thing about them being brothers as well, isn't it? Yeah, they, they're always there to about, give them a dead arm. <laughs> what about the rivalry? Do you feel like there'll be any kind of like jealousy, like if one like does make, do so, well? And so as soon one... as Man City came in for Rens, Rocco's football went, skyrocketed. He's gone so much better. Really? Because, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's yeah. like they're like the, comp- the competition. Yeah. Like they're not saying anything. I didn't thought that was my boot. Um, <laughs> They're like, they're like welly thing, like wellies. It's like plastic Oh Yeah, plastic, plastic. <laughs> they're like wellies. They're plastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's good. It's sibling they're rivalry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how's Gabs? Uh, Gabs. In a, in a, in a Gabriella like, well, at is, least you've got Gabs anyways. Gabriella, like. well, since I bought her a car, I've not seen, I've not seen. <laughs> she disappeared. <laughs> Unless she crashes it on his money. I don't really see her. <laughs> Um, and has she crashed it yet? Yeah, of course she has. She took the gate off. She's uh, <laughs> she's took a front bumper off. She's uh, it's two separate times. Stop. Uh, yeah. How? She, oh, Gabriella, you know Gabriella. She just lives in Gabriella land. <laughs> she's just like do 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 do. Like the other day, there's two bin bags near the front door to go out to the bin. And uh, she picked one up and I thought, she's going to take the bin out. So I stood watching her and she moved it just a couple of inches to the side, <laughs> opened the door, shut it behind her and waddled off to a little car, bum wiggling. I thought, I love Gabriella's life. Oh, she goes into the bathroom, brushes the teeth, spits toothpaste on the mirror. <laughs> toothpaste in the mirror. <laughs> Gets ready, curls it. All she does, that's all she has to worry about is putting her lipstick and her curl in her hair. Oh, uh, has she seen anyone? No. no. So she's got a best friend, her and Amelia, um, and they can't pull rope. They're just, they're, they're like me and me and you were, but like a teenage version. So they're just... They're just happy. Yeah, they're just yeah. happy. They're just happy. Going out and having fun. And like Phil says, you both need to have a wash <laughs> to even get a boy. <laughs> they sit there. You do have a wash, but you know, like they just sit there and they're scuffs like, yeah. like happy with each other. 
Nice. Yeah. So um, recently Gav's had a bit of surgery as well. Gav's has had a nose done, yeah. finally. She's been begging me since she was 14, saying that she can't breathe. So there's the, the you mentioned that you'd got a bit of a backlash over this, and there's a reason. It was it was a there was a medical yeah. reason for well, you, it. As you know, because to... I've been sort of against surgery since I had, my boob went wrong, and so of course I'm going to get a bit, a bit of backlash. But she's 19; she's going to go and do it anyway. And she couldn't breathe. She couldn't breathe up one side. And I've been saying for years, well, you can still breathe out one side when you have it done. You might not be able to breathe out of any. Yeah. Um, but she can breathe out of both now, and it did go well. So. And how was so, the recovery in that for her? Was she is she now wanting to get more stuff no, done? No, no, she's not. My mum is. Oh. So my mum's had a facelift and she's going, it's just showing my eyes up now. What are oh. my eyes doing? Oh, gosh. Like, Do one, Julie. This is the thing. I think it can get so, like, addictive when you start looking at one thing and having one area. That's what I noticed doing, like, bits and pieces to your face. I did have filler and, you know, I've... It does start, I mean, obviously, then you wait a year and then you're like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> when you go on Housewives, nobody's face would move on there. <laughs> on the big screen, I'm like, oh. Um, oh, I need to watch that one. No, but it's, um, it, it, I do feel there's so much, um, you can just scrutinise yourself, can't you, and then want to Come have to my house, you've not got time to look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still wanting more stuff done, though. Yeah, I do. I really want... I really want a tummy tuck. Well, just the like you've got enough. No, just the skin, a mini tuck. one. It's like a pug dog's forehead. I'm, it's, I just really want that bit cut. And maybe a brow lift. Uh, so, so it's not put you off then? No, I think because I've seen two really good surgeries. Um, I really want the same doctors. Like, hey, you come here. Oh no, what are you like? You're beautiful as you are. Oh, I know, but you can always improve it. <laughs> <laughs> so when people say about, you know, obviously you're a life coach. Yes. So how would you answer that if if people say like about you wanting to change so much about yourself and you're not happy? I, I just think certain things. Because I do love myself. I love everything. But that little bit of skin bugs me. And I just <laughs> think you've got one life. If you really want it doing and just really look into everything, go and do it. Yeah. Just cut that bit of skin off. Yeah. Just do whatever makes you happy. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, so let's go into becoming a life coach and how that came about, your history of like your childhood and, you know, how you got to where you are now sort of thing in your mindset about your, like the, your knowledge of, of things that you learned and why, where was the, where was the turning point for you to, to go down that spiritual route or that like um, self-help journey? Um, so I had a really good upbringing. My dad was in the army, but it was a very um, kind of strict, um, so I always remember saying to my dad, oh, I want to be a modern. He was like, well, you better think of somewhere else because there's plenty of prettier girls out there. It was always a, uh, he thought in his, in his, he wasn't being nasty. Yeah. He thought he was protecting me. Like, you can't dream, look, that, look what's in front of you. You can't, can't have stupid big dreams. Yeah. And that's, um, that's, that's the thing that I've like really realised about words and things that set our subconscious beliefs yeah. from childhood by our parents, majority of things that, our and that's only what us, they were taught. Yeah. So they're not, they're not no, trying to not, hurt you. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. It's just, it, it's, um, I've done it like yeah. to my kids and I've had to check myself like yeah. a lot of the time. And But my dad's different now since I've started doing it. Like he, he will send me like different, um, what do you call it? He'll share reels and everything. It's still bizarre that my dad shares reels, like positive ones and stuff. <laughs> oh, it's like, go on, right. dad, share the reel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Robert Steve. on the reels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so anyway, and then I, and, and I suppose it's, it's, sorry to cut you off, just like, it's, it's fear of you not getting what you want yeah. and it's the, the thought of, yeah. it's a protection. The protect, protection, yeah. protecting me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I've, actually Man City were after, um, Renz when he was four and then recently when they were after him and I kept saying, no, no, no. And then my mum said, well, what if, because the, they do ask a lot of boys and then they can let them go. And I was like, what if he doesn't? And my mum said, well, what if he finds out when he's older that you turn Man City down? Yeah, this is he's, true. So you've got to let you've, him, just got, yeah. you've got to let them learn through their own heartbreak. Yeah. Um, which is hard. Which is really I'm hard. I'm really discovering that now, especially. You just want to wrap them up in cotton yeah. wool, don't you? Hallie being 
the age that she is and yeah. coming to me and saying it's hard. You, you do want to sort of take them away from yeah. certain environments that they're <laughs> coming across and experiences, but they have to do it for themselves, yeah. don't they? Oh, you know, you, you know the, the first lockdown, that's my dream. <laughs> um, I mean, I thought it was all bullshit, but um, <laughs> my, it was my dream. My babies and Phil was locked in a house with me and they couldn't go anywhere. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Only for the first like few weeks, Two hours. but there was there was no worrying like there was no sorry just not that um, there was no worrying about schools or bullying yeah. or this or Getting that. Up to do the school we, run. Yeah, <laughs> we just all sit in our own shit, and um, it was amazing. Uh, so it was really good to connect as a family. Yeah. Me and Phil never argue because I would always argue. Like, I'm tired, always tired, always argue. Who's more tired? <laughs> um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. That's not answered one question that you answered. What did you ask me? I've just veered off into my yeah. ADHD <laughs> rant. <laughs> well, we were talking about um, you as a like the, the turning point of why. Okay, how you... yeah. So then I became. Um, so I got pregnant with Gabriella. Yeah. I was working in a call centre. Uh, did you have you talked about suffering um, bullying when you were younger? Oh, did you get bullied? Yeah, when you were I got bullied really badly uh, to a point where I tried to kill myself. Really, I tried to jump in front um, of a car, um, and it swerved, um, and it was just a horrific. How horrific. old were you then? I think I was. It was year seven, and they were year nines. Wow! Oh, it's awful. Um, and I think that's why I'm so scared of my kids because they've got phones now. Yeah, it's crazy. Whereas, whereas when I was getting bullied, as soon as I went home, that was over. Yeah. Unless they rang the phone, house phone and said, hey, Julie, can you get put me through to Tanya? They, like, they couldn't get a hold of me. So it's just petrifies me, the whole thing. Put, put you through to Tanya. Are you in it like- <laughs> yeah, shout Tanya. <laughs> you want to put you on hold one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a switchboard at all? <laughs> we had an upstairs phone. I used to, when, when my mum used to pick it up downstairs because we used to be ringing people. I used to you pull it down quick. quick. Yeah, like, yeah, I remember that. Pull it down like to... <laughs> Oh, God. Um, yeah, so that was really horrific. But I find that being bullied back then has helped me now. Exactly, yeah. Um, but when you when you... You don't see it. You then. don't see it then. So this is going back to obviously that our kids having their own experiences and you know yeah. and it makes them strong. It makes yeah. them who they are. You Even know? if one of mine's grumpy though, like I get on the nerves, so I'm going, Is everything all right at school? Are you sure you're all right? Oh. And they're like, Go away. You're being <laughs> creepy. <laughs> oh, it's um, horrible. Yeah. Um but but yeah, it does it does make you stronger eventually yeah. and makes you have more empathy and just just makes you a nicer person eventually so what was the the bullying what what did that stem from I'm because I just moved my dad was in the army so it was my first English school um, so where were you living we were living in Germany Duisburg so do you can you speak German I got a D in German <laughs> Hagen Dagen <laughs> Hagen <Dach. laughs> yeah I can say the ice cream and hello yeah. you can count to ten how are you today uh is that, is that bye yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Guten Tag. Good good day. Yeah. Pimmelkoff. Don't know that one. Dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Shizer. Shy. <laughs> yeah, no one's fair. All words. the important words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They weren't in the curriculum though, so got D. Um what was he talking about again? Just talking about you were living in Germany, so oh so, yeah. So what? So I what moved age did you and leave? I had a fake naf naf jacket. So did you get bullied before that in Germany? So were you actually in a in an English school? Like so it's the first English school. So I've always been to army schools. So well, not uh, yeah, army English schools. I've been to in Germany. So did you live on the site with? Um, yeah, like where all the yeah families army lived? camps. Yeah, what was that like? Can you remember? Well, it? it was just normal to me. It was just normal, and I loved yeah, it. Yeah, but like, but everyone was nice because everyone had the same type of. Um, strict well disciplined parents um like there was no it was just nice I just really lovely when you say disciplined parents what do you mean like uh, the, julie and steve uh, well <laughs> you know like um in the army so it was like they weren't wrong ones yeah i'm trying i'm not explaining this right no no <laughs> Um, what do you mean? Well, because it was all one community, so you so they didn't do anything. Go out and did they go out and stuff? Oh like? God, yeah. I mean, I mean, like, so as kids, we we weren't like bullying each other, or there was no. You nastiness. were all in the same boat, yeah. yeah. So it was just one communal school mm. that was like, yeah. yeah. There was I'd never thingy the word bullying or right. 
So and then, how old were you when you moved then? Uh, year seven, so 11, so see, 11 12. Yeah. And one of the year nine, so on my first day, one of the year nine boys fancied me. And then well, I, don't, I didn't even really know what was going on. But this year, this girl who had a gang and it just, just, just started bullying me. So anyone in my year was too scared to hang around with me. So I was sort of walking around on my own. Then they were threatening to give me a Chelsea smile, which they slit here and here wow. and punch in the stomach. I oh, was wow. just horrible. And had they done that on. to someone? No. But Gosh. it's still enough to shit you off, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that was uh, something off the Cray Brothers, wasn't it? They yeah. used to do that. Oh, it's uh, awful. Yeah, that's frightening. Um, but I won't talk about it too much because I start crying. I've worked through it in therapy anyway. Oh. Um, <clears throat> but like I say, it's... It has helped me in now, I think. It's made me stronger. You can believe called that, by the way. You're saying okay, you're getting upset. Yeah. 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 Oh, we'll have to do it. I'm booked in on January. Yeah, we have to do it with Jess. Mm. Jess is, like, amazing. Amazing. Is it doing that? No, it's no. so. It, <laughs> so believe it, Jess has created belief coding through all the different therapies that she's learned from NLP, kinesiology, um, EFT, Reiki, like all the different things that she's learned. Which um, it's about recoding your belief system. We we're saying about we pick up subconscious beliefs yeah. from our experiences that that will come from a past memory, from our reflection, from mm. our younger self, and it's getting to the to find out where where that first started, where that belief came from. Um, you know, you're saying that had a, that's affected its trauma. It's trauma, yeah. basically, that's 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 still apparent because yeah. it still triggers you when you talk about it and it makes you upset because it's something that, like, that's yeah. still in there, do you know? And so yeah, I need belief. to change my coding on money because I still never say She's no to jobs that. because when I was a single mum with no money, that feeling... I'm still terrified of having that feeling again. Like when I couldn't afford to buy Gabriella any birthday presents, crying. I just remember it in this car park. It's just such a vivid, That's sinking a feeling. Yeah. Um, and my mum keeps going, to calm down. You just, you're taking too much on. Like I'm petrified of being skinned again, even though like yeah. no matter how much I've got in the bank or I'm still terrified because it mm. can go. That's definitely something that she is amazing at. The yeah. money, like the, she does the money mindset workshops, but also like, that is a belief. It's a belief around yeah. money and, and, and fear of losing it, isn't it? So yeah. you can completely change that. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you ended up getting pregnant with Gabrielle. Yeah. And then I split up with her dad. Um, and then I just came across an article about the law, um, about the power of positive thinking. It wasn't the law of attraction that came after. The power of positive thinking. So I started trying it and gratitude and all of this lot. So I was working in um, a call centre in for Orange um, and just and people were going, what's up with you? Because I was going, hello, how are you? I'm being grateful for just where I am at now. Yeah. But writing out my goals. Uh, and my goal then was to win Miss Blackpool. Um, Miss Blackpool, is that where you live in? No. Uh, well, because I'd done it years before and didn't get and uh, didn't win. So that was what so I was trying it out. All right. OK. Um, and and I wanted to be um, uh, a model. Um, so they said to visualise, go and get something um, and visualise it. So it was the FHM cover with Carmen Electra on it. So I got this cover um, and I was visualising, visualising, visualising. Um, and then I saw an advert in the News of the World saying, I'll oh, be the first non-celebrity to go on the front cover of FHM. And you know when you just know, because it was like, look out for signs, be open for signs. So uh, it was, um, my friend took a picture of me and then roll up Kodak oh, yeah. cameras yeah. and send them in. Um, and got into the top 100 and ended up winning it. Wow. Yeah. So I won Miss so Miss Blackpool. This is after Gabriella. So I won Miss Blackpool in the oh God, God June or something. Oh good, and then won the and then won the FHM. Yeah. So that wow. was that. Um, and and ended how up, was that? And ended up. Tra oh, so and one of my front covers. I'd ended up doing about five or six front covers for FHM. One of them was a um, a, a replication of the Carmen Electra one that I've been visualising. No way. Yeah. No yeah. way. That's crazy. Yeah. It's mental. It works. It works, but sometimes you forget it works. Yeah. Even now, I know it all. I've wrote a bloody book on it. Yeah, I still forget. Like yeah. I still sit and wallow, and yeah. I have to just like 
fucking. Yeah. And I'll, if I have my mum and dad say, go and read your book uh. one more time. <laughs> The girl that's got it all. Oh, the girl that's got it all. So you you made like a mood board and everything, didn't you? Yeah. And you, on your before, mood board was before. Um, so on my on my um, vision board was this house and stuck me and Gabriella on with a man out of a catalogue with a question mark and the little boy, a little baby with bright blue eyes, um, like white white skin because I'm quite dark skinned. Um, I just cut him out of the joint. It's the first baby I saw uh, out of a Johnson baby thing and. The house and ends up with Phil. The house that I was on the vision board exactly the same, and Rocco's got the whitest skin and the biggest bluest eyes ever. Yeah. It was the same kid. Oh my god! It's mental. Crazy. But it was before vision board would have ever been heard of, really. And my mum and dad thought I was a serial killer. So where did you ha- find out about the vision board? Do you know what? It's that long ago. I can't really. Remember. I think I just became obsessed with everything then. I, I used to just um, go on the internet and like there was no, when I was doing FHM, there was no social media or anything like that. It was, uh, I think MySpace came along not long after. What that, was what was the, I remember you saying what, you talked a little bit about in your book about the girls on the, that we were modelled with when you were, when you went away. Oh, right, them, yeah. Um, to do the shoot and... Yeah, so they were just like moaning about this and that and I was just so grateful and just taking it all in and and I think that's why I probably won because there were some better looking ones there and taller but because I had an attitude of gratitude. You, you were absolutely, well, you are absolutely stunningly beautiful oh. with an insane body oh, as well. well not now. And the personality to, to match. Oh, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then did you go on to do the your singing career after oh that? Oh, my God, yeah. And then I said, I said to my mum and dad, I want a record deal. And they went, oh, bleeding hell. No, you don't. Is that you on your mood board? Uh, no, board? I, that was just in my head. And anyway, I ended up going getting a record deal. <laughs> I had a number one hit. Do you think I'm sexy? Do you We've got to get a clip of that, Jacob, I think. Mrs. Mrs. Robinson. No, it's it? a, no, it's a High Street Honeys. Oh, High Street Honeys. I did Honeys. it with a High Street Honeys first. But, um, it wasn't my voice, obviously, but um, yeah. I've got it right, I've got it right here. <laughs> oh, there we are. All right. There we are. There she is. Woo! 2006, yeah? Oh, God, look, oh, look at me lovely belly there. Look at oh. you! Oh, look at my tight belly! You've still got a tight belly, I have you weirdo. Yeah. Is that the girl band yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a High Street it's Honeys. It's very sexy, isn't it? High Street Honeys, yeah. Oh, God, it's like porn. I know, when you watch yeah. it now. Oh, God, <laughs> bloody hell. No wonder my nan didn't want to show with friends. <laughs> Did you have a high-quality 4K back then? No, <laughs> thank God. Oh. oh, God. Sexy minx. Oh, God, right, you should put that on because Rocco will go mad. <laughs> oh, God. No. Yeah, so the girl band and then it, you met Phil. Uh, well, Phil was messaging me. He saw me on the front cover of FHM um, and was messaging me for three years on my Nokia 3210. I'd even upgraded <laughs> to an Elo Motto flip phone. He was messaging me that long. Um, yeah. But when I was modelling, like doing the FHM shoots and everything, all these girls were c- crying, going, oh, this footballer's broke my heart, it's cheated on me. And I thought, oh, God, I'm just going to earn my own money. I'm not having any of that drama. Uh, and I think there was about 11 footballers at the time. Just ran, They just get your number. Um, and t- so just telling them all to fuck off. Um, uh, but Phil persisted. He stayed every single week without fail. Uh, All that cheeky. Can I take you for Chinese? Uh, <laughs> is that his chat line? Uh, all that. This one's Salford, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish Phil. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, the rest is history. Oh, yeah. So lovely. And you make a great pair. Oh, I mean, and yeah. then the, the, the fine pair you do. <laughs> when we Who do you think's more on the spectrum, me or him? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been diagnosed on the spectrum, and he's not. You no, know, we're going to talk about that in a sec. We're just going to reminisce <laughs> about your uh, me and Wes coming on your, your honeymoon. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Well, so our honeymoon. I mean, the year before our wedding, we went to the Maldives. You mean our honeymoon. Our honeymoon. <laughs> Me and Phil went to the Maldives the year before our wedding, and my God, it was boring. boring. 
<laughs> I've never been so bored in all my life and I can't go snorkeling in the sea and that and these little white crabs, oh, it's horrible. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, we said we're having a fun one for our... So, so we invited yeah. the fun guys. The fun guys. <laughs> and Do you what? remember after my wedding and I got there and I'd, I'd only packed a white bikini in because I've been drinking so much in my wedding and I drank that cucumber juice and I, I ran to the toilet oh and shit my, my God. pants. Oh my God, that's when it went to like LA. I ran off it? like that yeah. and I'd shit my only bikini that I got just a little bit. <laughs> So I remember you finding an open tampax, not a used one and just an open one and sticking it up your, up your nose in the airport. I've got a picture of it, actually. No still. tissues. Are just... <laughs> Wait, one's got a snotty cap. One's got a snotty cap. I need a wee. Oh, Can I have a wee? Yeah, quick. Go on. Welcome back. Hello. We break. <laughs> we break. <laughs> Um, so yeah, where were we? Yeah, Vegas, LA. Um, a- LA was a weird place, wasn't it? When we went really there, really weird. Yeah. We've let down. Yeah, we're so excited about it. I mean, we were, we were really jet lagged, anyways, weren't we? Jet lagged, <laughs> hung over from the wedding. <laughs> yeah, we didn't give it a fair a fair crack. Did Everywhere we? shut dead early. Oh, well, sat like that. Yeah, I remember going in. Was it Nobu? We were literally couldn't keep our eyes open. Yeah. What a waste. I know. Oh. I think. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, the, then the, um, the, the, what do you call it, the bus that we got to go to Vegas. Oh, before that, we went to Malibu on them bikes. Oh, yeah. And they made us go bike riding. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. Yeah, because you had a good bike. Yeah. I got, I got like my mum's bike. She had in like. I think they were both like that, weren't they? Yeah. It was really sweet and um, not Venice Beach, not what I thought either. No, it's rough. Yeah. I think there's two two sides to it though, isn't there? Well, we went both, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. On our bikes. Yeah. Oh, it was good. The bus, really good. do you remember getting to Vegas and then literally get, having to get changed and then going straight to the oh, pool yeah. party and the You shuffling along in them wedges. Yeah. <laughs> Take your wedges off! <laughs> we were going to miss it. Well, we were going to be an hour late and the boys were fuming with us. Like, yeah. we drove the bus. Yeah. For fuck's sake. It was amazing. Oh. Amazing! Still got all the videos. My, uh, you've been framed pool moment when I slipped in the pool. Oh my god, that was hilarious! <laughs> in fact, we could put that up. Oh, if please you put that up. I'll have we to, need I'll have to, to put that in. up. Let me get it. Right, ready. Uh, this is vague. No, I don't think you'll see it on there. It's not on YouTube. It's not. I didn't send it into you've been framed. It was something that I've got on my phone, but it was from oh Vegas. Oh my god! We, yeah, that was the funniest. And it was just. I thought Phil was asleep, <laughs> and then he just sat up laughing his head off. Oh, it's so funny. Could have been dangerous that. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been pretty dangerous. We're doing handstands and all sorts. Oh, it's crazy time. Crazy oh, time. Oh, it was so good. So good. We should uh, go to Vegas again. Adele's going to be playing in Vegas soon. So we yeah, we go. definitely should. Definitely should. If we can get there <laughs> without that. Um, but yeah, so moving on. Uh, the Tanya Bardo. So the book, written the book. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because you, you were what I said to you in the car. You were you really? I was having crystal healing, so I was really in touch with my spiritual side. Obviously, before I got pregnant with Lola, I was doing the crystal healing, and I was really open to it. Um, but I, I hadn't really delved into like the self help and like connecting. Obviously, Vicky t- spoke about connecting with angels and stuff like that, but not really. Um, you know, you give me the Kyle Gray book and then I read your yeah. book and it really opened my mind into that, the self-help journey, you know, and yeah. how. So thank you for that. Well, universe conspires people together. Is yeah. that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> the universe brings, not out with my speech or my letters. Yeah, <laughs> brings us together. <laughs> it brought yeah. us together, didn't it? Yeah, and you know what else? You always, I mean, you were strength, a power strength for me through the show, especially when I was going through some pretty bad times, very bad times, um, but you always had my back which I was very grateful for as well but also just really supportive and like you know telling me I could do things on my own and and you pushing me to to step out of my comfort zone and a step away out of you were going through such a bad thing and then it's easy to forget how amazing you are and you are amazing you can do it 
and you can fly and you're flying now. Fly! And I'm proud. <laughs> fly, little birdie, fly. <laughs> yeah, you were. You really were so supportive. And uh, so, yeah. That, so you, when you... So what was your first book? So I, you give me the Cal Gray book. Was that know, one of your first books? Um, I don't think that one was out then. Um, do you know what? I can't even... I started on the Cosmic Ordering books, which you can't really find anymore. All right. So was, I started with the Cosmic Ordering. That's how long ago it was. And just everything like Think and Grow Rich and uh, uh, How to Win, um, which Phil finds it weird because I keep all my books. Um, what's it called? One's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, yeah. Which I love. Yeah. And Phil goes, what do you want to get friends for? you got friends. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's not about that. It's about... It's a really hard. Thing as far it's as a confidence it? thing. Yeah. It's about yeah, um, and that's a really good book. I always um, advise that. Um, but yeah, I just became addicted, like addicted, addicted. I didn't watch telly. I was just obsessed. Mm -hmm. um, so then I did um, a life coaching course uh, to get qualified, and then um, because when I got with Phil, I'm uh, he moved to Sunderland, so I was there, and it was the first time I'd not worked in my whole life. I've always been a cleaner or whatever. Um, or gyrating with no clothes on, um, <laughs> <laughs> on the front cover of FHM. Um, so I forgot what I was fucking talking about. Yeah. So you, you got with Phil and you moved. And oh yeah. So I was working. bored. I was bored. Well, not bored. I just wanted, I wanted the next chapter. Yeah. Um, so I was writing the book and then I created the jewellery, which comes with the instructions and everything on how to turn your dream to your reality. And everything was there ready. I put it on, um, I put it on a vision board, um, saying now I want a, a number one hit TV show to help sell this. And then that's when you came wow. along and so, and I, th I think whatever you put on a vision board, it happens three years later, just for me. All right. That's it the does. timeline. Mm. Okay. Some people say five. Okay. I know Jim Carrey said five, but for me, I find three. I think everyone will be different, won't it? Yeah, it and it can just be tomorrow. It's yeah. just your your thought process. Yeah, that's why, like I've said in my in my book, um, they say time is a healer, and it's not your mindset's a healer. Yeah, if you decide today, yeah, that you want to be healed, you yeah. can be healed. Yeah. It's, we are, that's oh. the power that we have. Who yeah. shouted that? What did they say? Fuck it off. Who oh, did they? <laughs> no, yeah. I don't know. I made that up. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's definitely. And that's one thing I've really honed in on the fact of how powerful we actually are. Yeah. And it's our own yeah. thought process and words, thoughts carry a vibration, which then affect our immediate reality and yeah. that's why I've just had tattoos on my back um I you know, love those. the only way out is to go within yeah my own sign there yeah you know, it's um tell it's you what so get true. me though fucking hormones they don't half mess with my vibration <laughs> need to get on the uh, Elsa R. what's that the, the, Elsa Ra, with um, Elsa Alyssa that I've had on the podcast with um the, the tablets that she does oh yeah so they're like for hormones um energy levels like there's you know weight you know um, balanced weight weight loss is it she'd if you take them religiously it helps with like you know to, to stop you putting on weight easily and oh. you know helps with cellulite you know all, all yeah. loads of different stuff um, yeah i'll have to speak to you know, my brain's a bit dicky I'll isn't to it send you some. We had to try them <laughs> so i've been on them and, and also um libido oh yeah what do you mean like you know libido what a viagra You've had a well, basically, well, basically, a female, like like female. I tried a female Viagra and it's give me a take. Yeah, but it's for girls, not not boys. Yeah, yeah, get. A, oh, maybe that way I'm right, right my mouth. <laughs> maybe my head had a fucking hard on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's pounding, uh, throbbing, but throbbing dick. <laughs> Hours, hours. Well, really? It makes sense now, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> Pulsating. Anyway. <laughs> Over 18. Head hard on. It's a new one. <laughs> Head hard on. Oh, gosh. Oh. Yeah, hormones are something in, like, well... I know I'm nearing that age closer than what you are anyways. Um, well, I think I'll cut, I think, I don't know if I've started the perimenopause because I started my periods really early. Right. And they say the earlier you start, 
I think I started at like nine or something. Really? Yeah, really, really early. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That is early. Oh, is that a pube? <laughs> I'll have to ask my mum. I'll have to ask my mum. Mum? Phone a phone a mum. <laughs> it's time period to get a pube at nine. Oh, oh God. <laughs> It's lunchtime, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, moving on. I want to get to your like so much to cover. This is what I used to be like as filming. You just always used to laugh at me. She used to fill my finger up. Cause she, but that Le- used to egg you on even more. Yeah, Leanne, like- Leanne was the only one that laughed at me. That's why I don't talk now when Leanne's not there. Like, mm. No one else finds my jokes funny apart from Leanne. <laughs> right, come on, back in the room. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so... Obviously, you did the show. We've had such an amazing time, like we discussed. Um, but getting on to, uh, most recently, the seizure that you've had through yeah. the ADHD, that you've only really discovered the ADHD, um, that you had it. And yeah. You've been diagnosed with it, hadn't you? Cause well, you did struggled. you ever think I had ADHD? Because <laughs> I knew there's something wrong with you. Yeah, yeah that's what my mum said. I always knew there was something. I was like, you fucking no. take doctors. <laughs> no, but you suffered with postnatal depression as well after mm. the babies, didn't you? So you've been on tablets um, yeah. for that, which you spoke openly about. And yeah, well, anxiety and depression always. But now I'm thinking, was it just ADHD? Because... It's a for women it comes out differently. So this is ADHD. It's always fucking messing. Um, it comes out differently. So it's a, like a, a sense of like you know restlessness, like oh, some, oh. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I was thinking that was anxiety. Um, anyway, got diagnosed. And how do they diagnose ADHD? Uh, you have to do a lot of tests. Um, so they, they sit you in front of this com- uh, computer and um, and I, I couldn't sit there. I was up stretching my legs and um, but I didn't realise they, they were monitoring, monitoring your movements and they also do, there's lots of different tests you, on your brain and um, so basically it's just neurodiverse. Our brains are just wired up differently so mm. we'll, still, we'll still get to the same like end point, end point <laughs> but we'll just go a different way. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, go like that, yeah. <laughs> or sometimes, like or sometimes I'll just go like I'm there, like and oh, I'll right. go, okay. Why can't you just Does run it... over the dog? And get, there. <laughs> <laughs> and get it. There's a re- there's a really good TED talk actually about um, uh, Ken Robinson about ADHD. Well, saying that there's a little girl from years ago, before ADHD was a thing, and there was they took the little girl. Have you seen it? No. Took the little girl to. Um, have therapy I've spoke about it in another podcast I think it was with Philly J and they thought there was something wrong with her because she couldn't sit still and like they had her doing all these tests and everything and um having therapy and then she was just they'd left her on her own and sat her in this room and she was like tapping her foot the music was on low and the therapist just turned the music up and she just got up and started dancing and um he said there's nothing wrong with this child she's a dancer take her to dance lessons and she it's a true story she ended up becoming like a world famous ballerina Ah. yeah so maybe you were dancing maybe i'm a fucking dancer (laughs) you know i'm not a dancer (laughs) yeah you know i'm not a dancer my the baby god. dinosaur dance. Oh my god. <laughs> Bendy's a brick. Um Yeah, so it's just interesting that maybe it's that part of your brain that, that isn't stimulated that you need to like You know, it's uh, it's it's it's, 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 it's we lack like dopamine. Right. So it can affect moods and Is it forced you to to research a bit more about the yeah, brain? Yeah, so I'm still not fully up on it. Uh, but I was trying all these different medications. Um and they were making me more manic or I was chewing, actually chewing my fingers off or feeling more restless um, because I was never loud or, like, I've always fidgeted and moved and... Um, but I was never loud or... Or no... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. That's the rest. Um, um, fucking hell. F- forgetfulness. <laughs> 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 oh, I mean, now, you were me, chewing your fingers and you were like, it. when you were being diagnosed. Oh, yeah, all, all, all the side effects to all these tablets yeah. were just horrific. And I wasn't myself, I was like... Ugh. This is the AD, ADHD, ADHD tablets. tablets. So what you, when did you get diagnosed with it? Uh, March. Right, okay, so it's very new. Very new. Um, and so with the last set of tablets, my heart was actually going, but I was just ploughing through it and I was at a photo shoot and just collapsed and had a seizure. Uh, and that's I so I just said I'm not taking them anymore. I'm going to stick with ADHD. Stick with ADHD. Um, but I've been looking 
I said fish oils, um, changing my diet, um, trying not to drink alcohol, which is hard yeah. sometimes. So I don't yeah. drink a lot anyway, as you Balance, know, but yeah. when I do, I go for it. <laughs> Like I'm like I'm like I'm a fucking a main character on Geordie's Shore or something. Yeah. Like, I'm not a forty year old mother of four. <laughs> so we, have, we did speak briefly when I met you. You know, we we're talking about the microdosing because so stuff like that has been diagnosed. Yeah. For people with like ADD, ADHD, anxiety, and stuff like that to to bring them yeah. into a more. Well, I'm still on a little bit of antidepressants, so you're not allowed to try that. And I think oh, and right. is it illegal? Uh, yeah. Maybe, so I wouldn't try that because it's illegal. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot. What I was say. Is that, I don't know if it, uh, Michael Dawson is, is, a, is it actually? Because they've done loads of um, tests on it and they've confirmed that it is actually, it's yeah. being prescribed by. No, if you get found with it, it's. No, um, but it's, yeah, I think it, if it's prescribed through certain avenues because I was listening to a Jordan Peterson on a podcast and he was talking to a guy who got actual a grant from the government to do the microdosing experiments on people oh, maybe and, and the not. mushroom you know the, yeah. the, the psilocybin I think it probably depends whereabouts you are yeah it might have been American I'm not sure maybe Amsterdam no it wasn't Amsterdam I don't think it was anyways um, yeah that's just there is I think that and this is this is why it blows my mind and I am actually going to get someone to talk about plant medicine on in the next couple of weeks and different like alternative therapies because it's just so easy to prescribe a pill to you yeah. that is obviously mixed with stuff that's not good for your body as well. Which may have a seizure. Have, yeah. Fucking hell. So then and then when I, read the, when I read the things, these actual doctors are giving me it, when I read it, it said it can cause sudden death. Heart attacks, seizures. Like, oh my God, wow. I'm a mother four. Wow. But so, since I've been doing yoga daily and uh, meditating, all, all the, all the yeah. things, and I just feel so much better. I mean, I'm still at the start of my burnout to breakthrough type of journey sort of thing, yeah. but I'm getting there. Yeah. Uh, so you're not taking the tablets anymore? No. Oh my God, the withdrawal from them was horrific. Really? It was like I've been to Ibiza for 10 years. Really? So Awful. this is the thing is that people get hooked on them and then it's very difficult to come off them and especially with such... I couldn't like move. Just, I was like in concrete and I was depressed and it was, oh, it was horrific because it's basically amphetamines that they give you. Yeah. Um, so it's really? just... Yeah. Well, surely that's going to make you... No, so like if I have a coffee, it'll make me tired. Really? Um, they kept, and I've always wondered why, because I'd, I'd have a Red Bull and then just go tired and have a sleep. And never, not knowing I've got ADHD, it's the opposite. Ah, mm. wow. So a lot of people with ADHD have addictions and um, because to it, it, it sort of settles their brain. I see. So like caffeine will oh, settle me. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Will make me tired actually in sleep, and that's because it's the chemical imbalance in the brain that is like the opposite. Um, it's not a chemical imbalance; it's it's just neurodiverse. It's just a different type of brain, right? Um, and that's it's like we've got seventeen TVs on in our head, whereas one person that's that's why like the a lot of like Elon Musk and a lot of people have lots of different businesses. Do you know what I'm like, Philip? I've got another business idea, and he goes, "Oh, for fuck's sake, what now?" <laughs> because it's like next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, and yeah. then and then we'll go into burnout, overwhelmed, and okay. then just not speak on the phone for like days. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. So I'm still. I'm still. So you changed your diet and stuff. Then. Yeah, Does I've that changed help? my diet. So I have to make sure I have all my brain foods, all my avocados, all that type of stuff. Um. Yeah, and trying to get cut down on sugar and just the basics, really. Yeah. The basics that we all know that we all don't do. So this is the thing, I think, with kids. There's a lot of kids that have been diagnosed with, with ADHD, isn't it? And, and Yeah. Well, uh, one of mine has, but he's also got, I won't say which one, but he's got, also got mild autism. But so with that comes, he will only eat beige foods. So I cannot get him for love uh, nor money. Even if I injected it in his arm, he, he would spit it out. I cannot get him to have a green food. Really? It, it's so difficult. Oh, no. So I really get where, you know, when people say, well, you can do it. it's all right for me because I know I've got to force this spinach down. I've got to do this. Yeah. Fuck. I've only got ADHD. Yeah. Oh, it's so difficult. Mm. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to anyone that 
has a child that's or, or feels like they might have the symptoms of ADHD? Well, that's what I'm looking into at the minute because it's a five to seven year waiting list. So that's my next project, actually. Oh, right. um, I'm hyper focused on that is um, helping mums um, and people because a lot is unless you're a really naughty little boy who gets fast tracked. No one gets seen. It's a five to seven year waiting list wow. on the NHS. The prescriptions, <clears throat> you know, like when you pay a prescription, it's like nine pound for anything. It's 80 pounds. So, and, and it's not it's not just affecting the family, it's affecting people in their classroom, if they're disrupt, disruptive, um, outbursts. Um. Do you feel like, do you feel like things like meditation and, you know, yeah. helping, that, that definitely helps, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, like alternative therapies, are, yeah. instead and of fish going oils, to the Fish oils, meditation. Fish oils, right. um, and what kind of foods do, would you recommend to, to to eat if you have ADHD? To just all your greens, um, salmon, um, nuts, just all the basics. And eggs, stuff that we should be eating. All, anyway. Yeah, you yeah. know all the basics. Yeah. All the basics. So sugar just massively increase. Your, yeah, your... sugar no, um, caffeine not really. Even though caffeine makes you. Yeah, it just makes you sleepy, but it's still disrupting. Right. And you can thrive without it. You've got enough energy anyway. It just makes you tired. So there's no point. Mm. But so as caffeine actually is more for if you're if you're medicated, it can really just really really make you anxious. Okay. It just make it makes me anxious anyway. So I'll yeah. only have like one little one in the morning because otherwise I ain't opening my eyes. Yeah. Wow. That's Which crazy. is really contradictive, but it just gives you a little. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so you are going to so your new project you're going to be looking into. Yeah doing well just just looking into because I'm still learning at the minute still learning what's best what works um for my child and uh for other people's child like children yeah um and just it's so underdiagnosed like one in one in one in four women undiagnosed women with age actually commit suicide wow because it's um because I've been treated for depression anxiety and it's not that it's crazy. Yeah. And Can they're probably we... obviously drinking lots of alcohol and stuff. Yeah. Just exactly. quieting the mind down and the demons. And mm. it's not that. Mm. Um, just we'll, we'll touch briefly on my glam style because that's doing super well. Yay! Super well. And you've just had the big um, billboard. The big in, billboard, uh, yeah. In United. Yeah. The giant Tanya. Yeah, I was the like, big ah! giant Tanya, yeah. <laughs> Phil's worst fucking nightmare, yeah. that <laughs> big giant Tanya. But yeah, it's um, doing really well, isn't it? Yeah, My yeah. Style I mean, and... with COVID, obviously, all businesses were hit, and we we just had to stop trading because we couldn't get any clothes. No one wanted to buy clothes, so we turned uh, the business page into um, just a helpline uh, for domestic abuse. Oh wow! Um, so it's only really it's only really been going for the past year. So like, we're so grateful that it's just really picked up. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's doing amazing. really good. It's such a nice thing to do as well. It's yeah. such a great cause for yeah. people, women. Um, and just can you tell us one specific story, quite quickly, um, short one, um, about somebody, because I know there's so many that you've you've t t spoke about that I've heard of, you know, somebody that's bought your jewellery, that's like done the wish, and then something's come true that they've, they've really wanted you know whether it's um oh god there's so many i, I get a lot, of, a, lot of so nice. a lot of pregnancy ones yeah um, i've been told that they can't get pregnant can't, and then yeah they get the wish bracelet yeah they get the wish bracelet a lot of got we've got had so many pictures through with the actual baby's Aww. hand with the with the wish bracelet which is lovely um <clears throat> And even uh, being on the cover of FHM or like yeah. married a footballer. Yeah, <laughs> married a footballer, still got him, you know. Um, oh, God. Oh, God, I don't know. I can't know. I can't think of one. Too many. Too many. I remember I remember seeing one that you say in the, the, the being about wanting to get pregnant and then she yeah, having the to have baby IVF there. and then she couldn't get pregnant and then she ended up doing the wish bracelet and then she ended up getting pregnant. Yeah. Then, that's one that sticks in my mind. Yeah. And really, it's nothing about the bracelet. It's when you fill the instructions in, it's yeah. about your mind. Yeah. But that's just a little thing yeah. of belief yeah. to keep yeah, for exactly. in your mind. It's nothing exactly. about that bit of string or metal, but it, it does help you. Yeah. It's that connection, isn't it? It's if, a connection. Yeah. Just keep believing, Open keep visualising, keep visualising. Yeah. So one of the things with the affirmations is, I kept saying when I first started doing these affirmations, they're not working. And then um, 
And then I just thought, well, I'm doing like 10 affirmations a day for the rest of the 24 hours a day. I'm saying, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So that, how is that going to override? So even if you have to set your alarm for every five minutes and just yeah. you can keep doing it, yeah. you have to override all those and yeah. make sure it just even tip over 50%. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's patience with me. I know like we did a channel in spirit, our spirit guides. I did a meditation on Monday of, of, of that, but Jess was like trying to get us open up to mediumship and channeling your spirit guides and, and accepting it's your intuition, isn't it? Listening yeah. to your intuition, that, that, that voice that you think that it's that first voice when you listen to your heart, not like then the monkey brain that starts going on. Yeah. It's that first intuitive answer that you listen yeah, to yeah, yeah I, won't, I won't make any decision without meditating first no. now no way no no, no. <laughs> your and my monkey's quick <laughs> <laughs> oh it's been a pleasure Tanya uh, I've got to do it has to end oh, we've no. got a full day today me and you yeah. oh thank you for coming on oh you're welcome I love you I love you too